Good morning. It's a little later than normal today. I had a few meetings this morning, so getting to it now. Um, today is day 42 of school closures in our district, and by my count, that means we have five work days remaining. So if you have your work done already, good for you. You just have to do some distance learning activities and check in with teachers until the 22nd to make sure your grades are up to date. Speaking of grades, friendly reminder, I do enter a 10 point participation grade every week. So um, if you have not touched base with me in some way, shape or form, either logging into Moby Max Minutes or sending me an email update or something like that, please do that and I will enter your participation grade for this week. There's a few folks I haven't heard from in a little while. I might be giving you a phone call too, just to check in. All right, so let's see who was logged on yesterday. I got an update from Aaliyah. Good job, Aaliyah and Brody. Fantastic, Brody. Keep up the good work. Evan hopped on to Moby Max yesterday. Talon logged in and Bella sent me an email update. I'll say Bella's family sent me an email update about what Bella's been doing. So good job, Bella. Um, I got a little tongue tied there. Um, so those students were on task. Good job to you for your participation this week. Um, it is Friday and when I'm recording this, so writing centers, of course, you have classwork to do, journals, creative writing, whatever you choose. Um, in math centers, we know that Friday means Friday fun, fun Friday. So wrap up anything you haven't been doing. If you've not logged on to Moby Max, you might want to hop on to that just to get your participation points. Um, or send me an email of pictures of what you've been doing. If you have not finished Math Boxes on page 226, you might want to work on that as well, just to keep your skills fresh, okay? Remember that Math Boxes have a spiral review, so they review all the skills that are upcoming and that we have already done. Fun Friday means if you have already been doing the math boxes and you've already been on Moby Max this week, you can use any of our websites, a fun math game, something like that. Get creative and make it fun. Um, and reading centers are up next. We're going to look at sight words for second grade and a quick book discussion for third grade. So if you don't want to stick around for reading review, you may be excused at two minutes and 35 seconds, record time. <laughs> and let's take a look at some sight words for second grade readers. Of course, third graders, you should know these, so it wouldn't hurt to warm up your brain and just see how you're doing with some of these sight words, okay? Here we go. I'm going fast. Keep them moving. Oh, uh-oh, I dropped one. Don't give up, you got this. Oh, I hear Willie. <laughs> Try to stay focused with me for a little while longer. He's meowing. What's this word? How did you do? Did you get them? I hope so. Next week we'll do a little bit more phonics review and then we'll call it a wrap. Third grade, you are up. We've been talking about this book, the naming of Athens and then the realistic fiction story after that. So we're going to be comparing how Luke finds the perfect present for his mom in comparison to the presents and gifts that were given in the naming of Athens. So it says make connections. Okay, in the perfect present, how did Luke decide what to buy for his mother? Mm, hopefully you saw the last few videos <laughs> because otherwise you're probably not gonna know. 
So in the perfect present, how did Luke decide what to buy for his mother? So let's look back at text evidence. So the perfect present. So she, he sighed on page 17. I don't know what to get either. I've got $5.50. I can't get too many things with my, with my amount of money. It says, dad bought a shirt for mom. I looked in all the shops, but I couldn't find anything. I thought about making a card and buying mom a bar of soap. So he was thinking about that. And then on the way home, we went to the grocery store. I found a better present for mom. I could afford strawberries. Strawberries were my mother's favorite fruit. Okay, so he was brainstorming, thinking about his budget, and then they went to the grocery store and the light bulb went off, bing! It's his favorite fruit, and they're not terribly expensive. So that's how he decided to pick those up. What helps the citizens in the naming of Athens and Luke in the perfect present get what they want? So this is a text to text comparison. Okay, so in the naming of Athens, remember the gods brought different presents to name the city. Um, let's see, Poseidon brought what he thought was fresh water and Athena brought a seed. The seed was to an olive tree which would provide wood and oil and things like that for the city. So the question is, what helps the citizens in the naming of Athens and Luke in the perfect present get what they want? Well, in both cases, there was a lot of, you know, thinking and comparing, right? So in the naming of Athens, they were able to compare the gifts that Poseidon had brought and the gift that Athena had brought and decide what would be in their best interest. And in the present that Luke had, he was brainstorming about budget. He had an idea in his head about a card and a bar of soap. And then he was able to take a look at the grocery store and get an even better, more practical idea. So it just took a little bit of thinking, right? Okay, let's see. In the back of the book, focus on the genre. Okay, here's what it says, plays. A play is a story that is written to be performed rather than read. Sorry that I wasn't a very good performer. <laughs> I did my best. Um, the people that perform in a play are called actors. Sets show the audience where the action is taking place. Props such as an olive tree in the naming of Athens also help make the story come alive. So read and find. It says in the naming of Athens, the names of the characters are written in uppercase and bold. A colon separates the name of the character from the words that the character speaks. The stage directions are written in italics. These directions tell the characters what to do. So we talked about that as I was talking about and Zeus says, here are some examples. So here is the character and here's what they say. And then we even have some stage directions right here. And we talked about that as well. Okay, so that's really all that this book has for us. It talks about plot, author's purpose, characters, and setting. So remember, good readers take a moment to think about what is a story all about? Why did the author write this story? who is in the story, uh, the characters, and what is the setting, when and where did it happen? So let's go back to author's purpose for a moment. So in author's purpose, we think about the word pie, P-I-E. P being to persuade. An author writes something to persuade if they want you to go and do something. I is to inform. An author writes something to inform if they want you to learn about something. And E is for entertain. Entertain means the author is writing just for the enjoyment of reading. So in these two stories, the naming of Athens and the story about Luke's present, perfect present for his mother, did the author probably write these stories to persuade you to do something, to inform you to learn, or to entertain you for fun in reading? What do you think? Whoops, the book's trying to run away. So I don't think this author is trying to persuade us to go out and do something. 
maybe they wanted to inform us a little bit about Greek mythology, but I don't know that they wanted us to learn too much about Luke's family. Maybe a few lessons about perfect presence, but for the most part, this drama and the realistic fiction story were to entertain. Okay, it was for the joy of reading and the practice of reading. So I would say that the purpose for these two selections was to entertain. All right. Oh, I have an unhappy kitty. <laughs> so next week, we will not be going on to another unit per se with vocabulary and things like that. But I do think that I'm going to pull the leveled reader for next week so that we can practice some of these comprehension skills. And then that's it. So for today, I'm going to log off. It looks like it's going to be beautiful. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will film again in, let's see, not the morning, Monday morning because it's Friday. Oh, I'm losing track of the day. <laughs> I will see you Monday morning. Bye-bye. Uh,